A major conservative anti-Trump group just dropped one of the most chillingly accurate ads about the former president with the goal of waking up seemingly indifferent Americans to the threat that he poses. And a recent poll asked likely voters to describe Trump using only one word. But the four most popular responses will disturb you, as will Trump's reaction. But before we unpack all that, if you haven't yet, please hit that like, subscribe, and the alert bell. All right, folks, we got some disturbing stuff here. Uh, the advertisement that I want to play from the Republican Accountability Group is so well done. This is a group of Republicans and conservatives who are never Trumpers. They are anti-Trumpers. They're one of the most prominent groups on Twitter, constantly fact-checking and rebuking him and trying to hype Americans up to the threat that he poses. And this advertisement is one of the best I've seen. So we'll play it, we'll unpack it, and then we'll get to the equally disturbing poll and Trump's reaction to it. This isn't hyperbole. A vote for Donald Trump uh, may mean the last election that you ever get to vote in. This is an exaggeration. He's a threat to democracy. This is Donald J. Trump. He was the 45th president of the United States. He caused an insurrection at the Capitol. And sorry to ruin your Christmas, but he's running again. This guy is openly running as a wannabe dictator. Trump said he would terminate the Constitution so he could be president again. Do you know who also did that? Mussolini, Chavez, Pinochet, all of them shelved their constitutions to centralize power. Trump is planning to purge tens of thousands of civil servants and replace them with loyalists. Authoritarian Viktor Orban used the same tactic to dismantle Hungary's democracy. Donald Trump's chances of winning are very real. The alarm is going off. Everyone needs to wake up. We have a choice between protecting our democracy or letting Trump destroy it. It's time to get off the sidelines. We can't let Donald Trump get close to the Oval Office again. So this advertisement, in my opinion, is great. Of course, I know it's preaching to the choir, right? I'm, of course, a, a never Trumper slash anti-Trumper. But the urgency of the advertisement, I think, is important. The, the urgency in the narrator's tone of voice, the alarm blaring, I think that this sort of like adrenaline-inducing advertisement such as you know, to the extent that political advertisements can possibly be adrenaline-inducing. I think that that sets a good tone, and we need to indulge in that more as we head into the election year. But that's just my opinion. Definitely let me know what you think in the comments. But the historical examples, the, you know, the, the other frames of, of reference, the fact that, you know, they even emphasize at the end that this isn't just the ramblings, the incoherent ramblings of an idiot. I mean, Trump is an idiot and his ramblings are incoherent, but there's quite a bit of planning behind him. Again, we've talked about Project 2025, the fact that conservative think tanks, people whose collective IQ are infinitely greater than what you see out of the Trump administration, they're putting their weight behind him, right? They're using, trying to use his demagogue to radically reshape the country into some sort of Christo-fascistic, right-wing, authoritarian hellscape. Trump is the vehicle for them, right? He's obviously interested in just revenge. He's not interested in ideology per se. He's a malignant narcissist, a pathologically lying malignant narcissist and an idiot. But so too is Hitler. And so too are many fascists. This idea that these – that fascists throughout history are these malevolent masterminds, it's not really the case. They're usually charismatic idiots as was the case with Mussolini and Hitler. And speaking of revenge, since that is Trump's goal, I want to direct you to a recent poll conducted by the Daily Mail. And this is a word cloud that came from it. Basically, it's a visual representation of the words and we'll, we'll unpack this together. Um, but note the words in question as a result of this poll. This is associated with Trump. In one word, what would you say Donald Trump most wants to achieve from a second term as president? You see things like, like freedom, peace, nothing, success, dictator, border, America, bigger words, dictator, economy, power, revenge. So those are the, most, the words most commonly associated with likely voters, all likely voters, okay? The, the, the political affiliation ran the gamut. Economy, power, dictatorship, revenge. Uh, three of those things are really alarming. Economy is value neutral, I suppose, but power is ominous. Dictatorship and revenge are truly 
terrifying. So this, again, was conducted by the Daily Mail. Um, I'm going to read a, an excerpt from the article. Our new poll offers further insights into the race. JL Partners also asked respondents for one word to describe each candidate's plans for a second term. The results suggest voters expect a miserable choice at the ballot box, ne ba ballot box next year, a candidate seeking revenge versus a candidate with no real plans for his second term. And again, gives you the word cloud associated with Trump. The caption says, Trump has used rally speeches and other appearances to rail against opponents. He's even leaned into the idea of being a dictator at times as a way of getting things done. Now, when respondents were asked to describe President Biden's plans for a second term, you see things like destruction, but bigger democracy, power, peace, economy, money, unity, equality, stability, right? Most of these are pretty good. And the biggest one being nothing, okay? Now, that's not good for President Biden. President Biden, the Biden-Harris campaign shouldn't want people thinking, my God, we don't want to accomplish. They don't want people to think that Biden-Harris want to accomplish nothing. But man, the word clouds are stark here, folks. At least you have things like democracy and peace and economy, right? Stability. There's a lot more positive connotation associated with these words, whereas with Trump, it's economy, power, revenge, dictatorship. Disturbing. But more disturbing still is the fact that Trump shared it. Trump reacted to this by retruthing it on Truth Central on his failing social media platform, suggesting that he endorses the association of these words with his second term in office. Folks, this is disturbing. This is just, this is so disturbing. And, and is, there seems to be a malaise associated with it. And I'll say this, it seems like the mainstream media is more openly reporting on this in a responsible way that they're condemning, you know, Trump's rhetoric, that they're condemning his plans, they're spending more time, you know, associating with it. I would argue they did so too late or, it, you know, but better late than never. But we have to wake people up to this. Uh, Pod Save America, which is one of my favorite, uh, you know, liberal slash progressive political podcasts, very much because the people who host it were actually – in electoral politics, they worked with the Obama administration, the Obama campaign, uh, the Hillary Clinton campaign. So they actually had feet and hands on the ground, right? It's not just theory. You know, they talk about how in order to successfully make this case, it's probably not enough to try to appeal to people's sense of democracy, even though you would think that should be enough, some sort of sense of civic pride in a democratic republic. People are either too indifferent, too distracted or too frustrated with the current system. And, and those of us who are big pop culture buffs or history buffs know that in history, and we see it all the time in media, a distracted or indifferent or angry populace can surrender civil liberties and power to a charismatic demagogue. You ever watch Star Wars? You ever look at history? And the idea that it couldn't happen to us is stupid. It's just stupid. The United States is, again, not divinely crafted, nor divinely enforced, nor are our institutions. We are fallible, right? These institutions, if they're maintained by people who are loyal to Donald Trump as opposed to the country or the Democratic Republic or the Constitution, these institutions could allow Trump to become a dictator. And that's precisely what the Heritage Foundation and Project 2025 want to do. So we have to take this seriously. But professional political operatives, when they talk about this, they say – you know, in order for this message to land that Trump is a dictator and that's a problem for you, we actually have to connect it to people. OK, so I've been thinking quite a bit about that. And so should you, you know, because there's this idea. Well, what about a benevolent dictatorship? As long as the trains run on time, you know, who cares as long as we don't notice? And to be clear, I don't think a Trump dictatorship would instantly like turn the skies red and there would be lightning bolts crackling from the sky. You know, it would look different than what we see in many movies, right? I imagine for quite a few people, including me, I'm a straight white guy, right? And I'm not poor. You know, it might be hard for me to, to experience personally a major shift under a Trump dictatorship. But what about marginalized groups? What about minorities? What about women in this country? You know, we talk about um, – uh, the, the the woman, the mother out of Texas who was recently – she was basically given a death sentence by the Texas Supreme Court and the Texas Attorney General because she was pregnant with a life-threatening pregnancy, right? And she sought a court-ordered abortion. She wanted the baby, 
right? She was a mother of two already. She wanted a third baby, but this baby, uh, this the fetus uh, was diagnosed with a fatal genetic disease that will kill the fetus and could have potentially killed her and would have certainly risked her fertility, future fertility, if she survived. And they were willing to sentence her to death. That could be anybody under a Trump administration because he's talked about, he's bragged about, you know, appointing the justices which killed Roe v. Wade, which opened the door to statewide abortion bans and potentially a national abortion ban. He leads a party led by religious zealots like Mike Johnson, um, who are absolutely flirting with the idea of a national abortion ban, as well as people like Lindsey Graham. We have to find a way to personalize this. I know we shouldn't. I know it should be enough to say, listen, it doesn't matter if or if not that it, that it affects you directly or certainly anytime soon. We should have enough personal and civic investment in our democratic republic that Trump should be immediately disqualified if he says he wants to be a dictator. But I don't know if that'll be enough. I, I, it may be just too esoteric and abstract enough and people just might be completely checked out. So we have to find a way to personalize it, to make it clear that Trump's dictatorship won't just be some sort of abstract 30,000 foot view view of the uh, American government. It will have meaningful, tangible impacts in the worst possible way on either you or your loved ones. Let me know what you think in the comments.